Grace, peace, and mercy from God our Father and Christ Jesus our Lord and Savior. True disciples of Jesus Christ are those who are indeed free. Who live in that freedom, who know the truth of freedom, who find freedom in the word. The theme of freedom is central to Paul's writings. Whereas the Gospel of John, take a guess how many times it comes along. Once in this text in John. So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. But what kind of freedom is Jesus talking about? Looking at, around at the world, you see all sorts of quests for freedom in all aspects of life. To be released from prison, to no longer live in lowly conditions, to be freed from the pressures of work. I don't know how many of you guys are still working. <laughs> to escape illness, addiction, political or racial oppression. Many individuals in the history of mankind who have fought for freedom um, have kind of become famous. William Tell, the folk healer, uh, folk healer of Switzerland, who fought the Austrian Habsburg House. William Wallace, led the Scots in the First War for Scottish independence against King Edward I of England. Didn't they even make a movie about that? I forget the name. Who was is, who is the actor? Thank you. I couldn't remember the last service. What is his name? It's a good movie. Braveheart. Braveheart. That's the one. Where he yelled, freedom! But the freedom Jesus talks about in our text is a freedom that characterizes his true disciples. True disciples of Jesus Christ are those who are indeed free. In many ways, the desires and struggles for freedom, whether in one's personal life, or here's one that will get you going, or in the broader social and political setting, are all related to our common human condition. That we humans are caught up in the reality of sin, and that we have to struggle with the multitude of symptoms. That explains a lot, doesn't it? <laughs> the deeper manifestation of such symptoms, of course, is the desire itself that has seized the life of every human being, in which will and does remain with us until life's end. And you're probably thinking, well, thanks a lot, Pastor. <laughs> what an encouraging sermon. <laughs> but the fact is, is sin is going to stick to us, is going to cling. Sin is not merely an occasional misstep or misconduct. But rather, behind every sinful act... that holds us captive even after baptism. Though the formula of Concord speaks specifically on natural man's spiritual state as being completely dead, even more as actively resisting God, being an enemy of God, We cannot look at ourselves as the baptized who are completely free from the powers of sin. We still fail to comply perfectly with the moral righteousness here on earth. 
after having received the passive righteousness of Christ and the freedom from sin's condemnation, that power. What we have learned about ourselves is that we are humans endowed with a will. How many robots we got in the, in the congregation? We're not floating pieces of wood on the water. After all, if we were floating pieces of wood or a robot on the water, we would not be responsible for our sin. But we are responsible for our sin. We have a big problem. We commit sin. And we are slaves to sin. And enslavement, it's more than just a, just a simple moral derailment. The deeper issue is is failed relationship with God. We do not love, fear, and obey him as we should. First commandment. Yes, in Christ Jesus we have found freedom. The Son has set you free from sin's condemnation through your baptism. He is the one who is truly free. And he continually sets us free through his free forgiveness and enables us by his spirit to serve him and our fellow neighbor. As Christians, we live in that God-given freedom in spite of sin's power. Sin's power is not going away until Jesus comes back. Many in society aspire to a freedom that knows no limits. Sometimes someone might think, well, I've, I've gained true freedom when I'm outside of Christ. I can do what I want. But the fact is, you're either going to serve the one below, or you're going to serve the one above. <laughs> There's no in between. <laughs> there is no free existence. To use a description from John's gospel, we either are bound below to the things below or to the things above. To fall out of the relationship with God means to find oneself on the other side bound to the things below. Even if someone believes himself to be free from God and chooses a moral responsible life, so they're living outside of God, but they're living a moral life, what we would call a moral life, in God's sight, that is sin. It remains sinful because it is outside of God. He is captive to the outside power of sin. We have been given true freedom, but by only being with Christ. How does this freedom come to us? Any guesses? <laughs> I heard something. Yeah, I was, I was kind of waiting for an answer. Yes, I do have more. <laughs> How does one become a true disciple? Who experiences this type of freedom that the Lord talks about? It begins by understanding what it is, this God-given freedom. It is certainly not freedom of relying on oneself. Or divorcing yourself from the relationship with God.
That may seem like freedom, but ironically, it is enslavement. Kind of enslaved freedom. And sinful. Only in God do we find everything we need for our spiritual welfare and what we must know about who we are. That he has created us, he has chosen us before we were born, and that through baptism he has made us his children and let us live under his grace. We are truly free when we live a life with God as it was meant to be since the creation of Adam and Eve. Therefore, someone who is truly free, someone as truly free is the one who understands or knows what freedom is. To be made free by the Son and find in him freedom, this truth will set you free. In a small catechism, There's a statement about confession and absolution. I believe when the called minister of Christ deal with us by his divine command, in particular, when they exclude openly repentance, unrepentant sinners from the Christian congregation. So if you have someone that's unrepentant, they're not coming up to the altar for communion. And absolve those who repent of their sins and want to do better. This is just as valid and certain, even in heaven, as if Christ, our dear Lord, dealt with us himself. God has forgiven. He's, God has forgiveness for the repentant sinner. He welcomes all, no matter how long they have been away or what they have done. Now remember, I said repentant. The slate is clean, your debt is paid, with no exception and no need of repayment. This is grace upon grace that is God as the giving, where we see God as the loving Father forgiving us. All are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Jesus Christ. This means that the righteousness that we are required to demonstrate becomes a gifted righteousness as forgiveness of our sins. God is merciful because Christ has given himself for us through him. The knowledge of the true freedom is received and understood. Being set free and being conscious of it makes one a true disciple. In that freedom, we are told to love God above all things. Okay, now you've got to pay attention. Not that you weren't. So we're told to love God above all things. No longer must we love him. This is why I got, oh, I got the other church. But we can do so willingly, joyously, because the Holy Spirit has awoken us, drawn us, and makes us alive. We are no longer dead. It is, because think about this, if we must, if you must love, is that love? <laughs> is that love? No, that's not love. But now we can joyously, freely love him. Because his Holy Spirit has awakened us. It is true that John does not speak of our justification in the same choice words as the Apostle Paul. 
But freedom is nothing else than the gift which is received through the absolution of sins. And we're forgiven. He remembers no more. When he says, forget as far as the east is from the west, remember, that's for, there's no end. There's no pole to stop. North and south, there's a pole. North and south pole. But east and west, it just keeps going. It's forever. He does not remember. Christ wants his disciples to know where they can find their freedom. It is in his word. The word combined with baptism, the water and the word combined for baptism. The word of preaching. The forgiveness we receive in confession and absolution. And we, when we take the Lord's body and we drink his blood, by faith we receive that and we receive forgiveness of sins. He pardons us once more. That's why I always say there's a twofer in the service. Because we are sinful beings. That sin will stick to us until Christ comes. You know, Martin Luther didn't always see the grace of God. When he was a monk, he saw the fear. I mean, blood Screaming, curdling fear of God. Like shaking the rafters, fear. <laughs> I think I told you about, you know, his, when he would confess to his father confessor. He was thinking of every single sin that he had done. But then I was like, no, this is, a free, this is a free gift that he gives us. Because it is, if it is by our own will, we can kind of look in the mirror and say, hey, we're pretty good. <laughs> but we're not. But God gave up everything in his son Jesus so that we could live. So when the times are rough, when the storm clouds come in and the winds blow and the waves get high, hang on to that forgiveness. Know that you are forgiven. Martin Luther said one time, no, it wasn't Martin Luther was Melanchthon, I believe. Sin boldly. <laughs> Just knowing you are forgiven. I'm not giving you permission to go out and... <laughs> but go with the confidence, knowing that your sins are forgiven. Solo gratia by grace alone. Solo verbo by through his word. Solo fide by faith. Received by faith alone. You know, those words are not empty. Yeah, they're old. I think it's Latin. So who knows? I might have slaughtered the, the uh, pronunciation because I don't know Latin. But it's not empty. It's not empty what we receive from our Father through the word, the precious gift of forgiveness. 
The grace of God lifts us up, and through his word, he will continually lift us. Amen.